Alright folks, we're back again. This time we are bringing you Nidhogg Hard Mode. It's the new trial introduced in the latest patch. Just released there yesterday. A lot of people... They seem to die a lot in it, but the fight isn't actually that difficult. So, we're gonna get stuck in. Keep our lead, take no shit. Um, these guys, for some reason, they're putting markers down as if it fucking means something. But you will not need markers in this fight. It is not that difficult. It's just a combination of simple AOEs that you dodge or don't dodge, depending on how fucking risky you want to take it. Um, they do hit quite hard, so if you are not a top health, you will probably get rubbed out. So here we go. Tanks pulling. We're going to get stuck in. Start fisting. Get your opener on them. Uh, big enemies, I guess, here do kind of annoy me because the lock-on system for monks really fucking sucks. Especially when you're trying to navigate from left to right, whatever. So, first AoEs are, you'll see like a scratch mark underneath your feet, then it turns into a circle AoE. So simply dodge that. Once dodged, you move to the middle and stand underneath them to dodge Hot Wing. Hot Wing is one of the two combination moves that will appear later. Followed by Hot Tail, but we'll worry about that when it shows up. So, yep, yeah, once you've dodged that, get back underneath the boss, continue your DPS and keep our lit. This phase will repeat until 75%. So, he's just gonna jump here, do a line AOE, followed by some scratch mark circles. I think that's what I'll just refer to them from now on. So, he jumps, does a shitty dive. Nothing new, it's the same sort of dive as you've seen in Stone Vigil, normal mode, last boss. You can remember back that far. So, here we go, we're down to 82%. Just keep fisting. Uh, every now and again he will do flame breath on the tank, so healers the tank do be careful for that. It's like a mini tank buster in phase 1. But, like I said, it's pretty easy. There's them scratch mark circles again, so let's dodge those. Hot wing, stand underneath them. Uh, you do not want to be getting hit by that shit, that will rub you out. So yeah, he's going to jump now. Transition into phase 2. Phase 2 is just an odd phase. In the hard mode version, which is this one, it doesn't really matter what order you kill the adds. However, just be aware that Shadow Dragon, the one that spawns in the middle, cannot be tanked. It's similar to the last boss of Stone Vigil Hard mode. Uh, it's just a case of predicting his attacks based on his very, very slow fucking aggro animation things. So, if you get hit by them, you're a fucking mug. Sorry to all the mugs out there, but... That's just how it fucking is. So, you want to kill these cunts before the boss returns. If the boss returns while these guys are still alive, it is an automatic wipe. So, just get stuck in. Uh, not take it too long to burn through them. So, a lot of people do start on Shadow Dragon because he can't be tanked, but that means you don't risk taking aggro off the other ads. Or off the other tanks. Uh, the other ads quite in low health, so I'm just going to leave him and get stuck into this fucking Shadow Phallic here. Just you know, fist away at him. Um, if you are taking extra long in these odds, use the limit break. Don't worry about it, just get the fucking limit break out, get them odds dead. You cannot afford to have these guys alive. It's similar to how Bismarck was whenever he first came out, people were just limit breaking the odds just to skip it. But lucky enough here, we're, we're doing right, like, so we're gonna get rid of him. And sure enough, just as we kill him, Cock Nose shows back up, so. Does we knock back, so you just want to stack back up in the middle and prepare to get healed through it. One of the guys is actually getting confused there because some people have been saying that you need one person to stand in each of them circles. I can flat out tell you right now that they are wrong. You just simply need to stack through the damage, suck it up. The longer it takes you to kill the odds, I think it does more damage. I'm not too sure in this, but just kill the fucking odds. That's just pretty much how it comes down. Just kill the fucking odds. Yeah, there you go, lad. I thought I had to be in one of the circles. No, you were lied to, my son. So, anyway, after that, Nidhogg will return in his Dragoon form. Doing simple line AoEs that you just walk out of. So, just get back into your DPS rotation. Just try and do as much damage as you can, get him down. The DPS check is really over at this point, so... You don't need to worry too much. 
Now, he will disappear and put these AOE circles on top of a few players. Just bring them to the edge. Preferably get them beside each other. That's what I find. But unfortunately, the other guy ran away from me, so whatever. And um, once you drop them, he will do like a super jump. Well, it actually is called super jump. Yeah, well, yeah, he does super jump and lands down, dealing damage, depending on how close you are to him. So just make sure you dodge that as well. And that's it. Alamore, tank monster on the tank. So same shit, different names. So we're just going to fist away here. Just keep it going. Keep it lit. And this will continue to around 60 percent ish. Uh, now he's going to try and mix it through the map there. Now try to roll people out. I also ran away there when I shouldn't have, but it's better to be safe than sorry. If you think you've got an AOE, get it out of there. Don't fucking drop AOEs in the middle of the room. I've actually seen people doing that, and you just want to beat them to death with a sock. But anyway, the 56%, he's near done. Keep poking him, keep poking him. Almost there. Almost there. And he should jump soon to start the last phase. On your back, jump. Jump. There he goes, there he goes. We're good, we're good. So now. 52% or 51% ish to the last part. Final phase opens up with the scratch mark AoEs and a dive. And then he'll land in and take his fucking Montel weapon. Yeah, so it's 51% of the transition was. Now here comes another old famous move, the Act Morn from turn 13. Only this time you do require the entire team stack with you because it does target a DPS instead of the tanks. So the tanks can no longer cheese this mechanic. Um, fireballs will spawn. Now the fireballs will detonate in a cross formation, but they won't detonate until the scratch mark AOEs have gone out. So try and keep that shit together before running away. I've seen people run away and it's caused them to get trapped. And you don't want to get trapped. Um, afterwards, he'll do hot tail and hot wings, or hot wings first, so you want to run underneath them and then run to the sides. So it's more in out shit. Yeah, I've that shit before in Ravana Extreme, in Ravana Horbo. In and out. And that's it, there's nothing really now that's gonna catch you out at this point. Everything's just on repeat until he's dead, so here comes Akmorn again. The only thing I will say is every time Akmorn repeats, just like turn 13, it will increase by 1. So there will be more damage going out every time it goes on. So the longer you take to finish the fight, the more damage you're going to take. Always remember that. Preferably take the main, main tank and get him to stack with you. Because the less damage you have to eat through, the better. Especially if somebody dies. If you die and you have weakness, just do not stack. Because you're just going to die. And it's going to cost your healers to cost more, or use more mana. I'd say you would need at least six people to take the stack, especially at the later numbers. So just be aware of that. Just don't stack. If you're if you're going to die, don't stack. It's just fucking pointless. Unfortunately, if you do get the AOE and there's not enough people to take it, you can't sacrifice yourself because it is a multi-hit. You will just choose the next person. So, there's no point even trying to be a hero and taking it away from everybody else. It's not going to accomplish much. But, that's pretty much the fight now. We're just coming on to another act more here. It's, it should be the last one before you talk it gets rubbed out. But it's still, overall, it's a pretty good fight. The music is fantastic. Like once again, uh, I actually I have to commend them on the music now. Especially because it uh, uses a bit of the Zenith theme. And I've, I've always had a nice sweet fucking relationship with that theme. I thought it pretty, was pretty good. But unfortunately with the mounts, you, you didn't really get to hear much of the music because you sort of get the mount music and stuff. So I wish they would change that up and let you use custom music while you're on the road in the game. But there we go, that's him dead. Pretty fucking simple. Just keep her lit. Take no shit. That's me getting the fuck out of here. And take my.